Good afternoon and welcome everyone to our 12 p.m. session. We ask for God's presence and I'm going to invite Sister Rowena to pray and then she will bless us with a message in song. Amen. Let us pray. Our gracious, loving, heavenly Father, thank you for this time that you have given to us. Lord, we come into your throne of grace with thanksgiving in our hearts for giving us this wonderful time so that we can be able to study your word. Lord, thank you for making yourself known to us, showing us the way of salvation through faith in your son. So Father, we ask you now to teach us through your word so that we may be ready to serve you for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of, you, of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet a light to our paths and, and strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. Yes, yeah, since we are going to study God's word, I want to sing the song from our... Adventist hymnal, hymn number 272, Give Me the Bible. Amen. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest-tossed. No storm can hide that peaceful radiance beaming since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, now and love combine. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken. When sin and grief have filled my soul with fear, give me the precious words by Jesus spoken. Hold up faith's lamp to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, all our steps in life. Teach us the danger of these realms below. That lamp of safety or the gloom shall brighten. That light alone the path of peace can show. Give us the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide us in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night to vanish in eternal day. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Rowena, for blessing us in song with the message that 
God has indeed given us the Bible, the word of God. His promises never fail. There are 365 messages in his word reminding us not to fear nor to worry. And so in the times that we are living in, if we want to have faith that will not shrink, we need to accept the word from the Bible. So may God bless you in your ministry. At this time, we want to invite the evangelist, uh, Evangelist Volani from South Africa, who has been abiding with us for the last couple of weeks on, on the Wednesday to allow God to use him to break bread with us, to open the word and to share life everlasting that is found in the word of God. Thank you, Evangelist. I know our lives are so busy, but when we can take the time, God promises that he will indeed restore. Over to you. Thank you very much, Sister Sharon. Thank you. Greetings to everyone. Uh, afternoon. I hope that everyone is good. And I hope that we all receive the blessing of the Lord by taking a minute of our busy day to really um, rejuvenate ourselves, fortify our minds, settle in the truth. Uh, for the times in which we live really demands that we choose between worshipping power or worshipping the Lord. There are a lot of things that are really uh, compelling us on, or pushing us or really putting us to a very overwhelming um, atmosphere that it becomes easy to lose ourselves because of the pressure in which we live under. But while the forces of evil are gathering around us, we should also take some time and retreat and really ask for the Lord to give us strength. And he does promise us to give us strength as we, if we come to him in prayer. And I believe that this is a time in which we want to come to the Lord in prayer. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that all of us can really tell of the times that we are nearing uh, our home, that we are at the borders of eternity. And as a result, we need to know what we ought to be doing at this time. Our text of consideration will be Revelations chapter 7 from 1 to 3. Just two thoughts maybe that you want to share. Looking at the state of the world and what kind of a people we ought to be. Maybe before we jump into it, we may just bow our heads as we ask for God to bless us in his word. Our Father, as we're about to open your word, Lord, may it not return, have it not done its work in our lives. You know the people, Lord, who are listening and will be listening later on where they are in their state of mind and being. May you may everything work together, the Lord, that we may find ourselves, particularly our names being written in the book of life. This is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Revelations, chapter, Revelations chapter 7, thank you. One, two, three. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on the tree, nor on any tree. Verse 2, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And this is the vision that John sees, particularly of the end of times, the perils that also Paul wrote about, that the, that the times of the end will be the perilous times. And John at this moment is seeing these four angels as if they are letting loose the four winds. And one angel is then seen to say, not now, because there is the work that we are doing. And if you let go of the winds, that work will be disturbed. We need to seal the servants of our Lord in their foreheads. And these angels are basically representing the strife. I'm not in prophecy, but I just want to 
us to consider the state of the world, that the reason why God has is holding back all the challenges and the troubles that are to break loose in this world, the famine in extensive, you know, aggravations, the pestilences. You know, what we have seen is nothing compared to what we'll be seeing when the four angels let go of the four winds. Now, just to get an idea of the four winds and what they really represent, they really represent the time of trouble, but maybe just to give a reference on where that where we can find that, in, it is in Testimonies, Volume 5, page 152, Paragraph 2. It represents not even the Sunday law, it represents the, uh, the time of trouble, the time of trouble. We are reading... The fifth volume, page 152, paragraph 2, the time is coming when we cannot sell at any price. The decree will soon go forth, prohibiting men to buy or sell. Of any man saved him that had the mark of the beast. Then it says, we came near having this realized in the California a short time since, but this was only the threatenings of the blowing of the four winds. So here in this uh, quotation, he she refers to the Sunday law as the threatenings of the blowings of the four winds. When you read last day's events, it, I think it also page two to eight, paragraph three, it says, just before we enter it, referring to the time of trouble, we all received the seal of the living God. Then I saw the four angels seized to hold the four winds. And I saw famine, pestilences, and sword. Nation rose against nation, and the whole world was in turmoil. But even without the quotations, we can get a sense that the four winds will not be let go by the four angels until the angels of the living God are sealed. In other words, when the sealing is done, only then will the four winds be let go. So any other thing that will happen before the sealing is done is not referred to in this particular passage when it refers to the four winds. So this is a time in which we are living. In other words, the time in which we are living now is a time that God is sealing his people. And we know from Great Controversy, page 508, no, 608, it says the final test of God's people will be the Sabbath. In other words, when the Sunday law comes, we will not yet be experiencing Revelation chapter 7 because it is the final test. for. There are those who will make it and be sealed, final seal, and there are those who will not make it and they will receive the mark of the peace. So that is where we are. We are friends. But what what it, my interest is verse three. The reason why the four angels are still holding the four winds. The command from the angel or the instruction from the angel is saying, "Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed." the servants of God in their foreheads. In other words, the name that is given to God's people, particularly in this work of these four angels and one angel who's doing the sealing, is I am commissioned to go to the earth to seal not just God's people, but to seal the servants of God. In other words, we may be in the church we may be part of God's church as members of the church, but if we are not servants in God's church, we will not get the ceiling. Now, there's a difference between being a member of the church <coughs> or being a member of God's church and being the servant of the Most High. I don't know if you remember the two parables of the, of the two sons in Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 21 from verse 28 to 30, I think 30, if not 38. Um, Christ speaks of a parable of the two sons. He says there was a father, had two sons. He said to the one, can you please do this for me? And the son said, yes, I will do it. 
and later repented and did not do it. And the second one said, I will not do it. And later repented and did it. And Christ says, um, who obeyed here? Or who's, who's my servant? And says, the one who did what you had requested, even though initially he said, I will not do it, but he repented and did it. What we, what we see in the parable as it begins, it says, both there were sons, but not both of them were servants. In other words, the other did not serve the father, even though he was the son, but he did not respond in service to the father. Now, what is a servant? In Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1, no, 1 Samuel chapter 3 from verse 7 to 10, we remember the story of Eli and Samuel, where Samuel would wake up in the, in the, in the middle of the night and he would hear a voice saying, Samuel, Samuel, and he would go to Eli. And he did this twice. On the second time, Eli said, the, the third time you hear the voice, don't come to me, respond and say, Lord, here I am, speak to me. Now, the third time when Samuel hears the voice, he, he does exactly what El has in, uh, had instructed him to do. He says in verse 10, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10, And the Lord came and stood and called as other times Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Samuel is referring to himself as a servant. And he says, I am willing to listen to what you are saying. Lord, speak to me and I will do exactly what you would want me to do. We remember the same thing being done by the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 19. They said, Moses, go, go and hear what the Lord will have us do. And we will do everything that the Lord has said. And we know the history. They were like the first son who said, I will do it, Lord. And he didn't. He didn't. Now, saying I will do it and not doing it does not make you a servant. But what we do find is that a servant is, is a person from Samuel who is willing to listen to the Lord, but also refers himself as a servant because he is willing to do what the Lord wants him to do. But also fulfilling what the Lord wants you to do then satisfies the qualifications of the servant. But also when we go to the book of Joshua chapter 5, and this is all connected to the people who will be sealed. The people who will be sealed will not be church members or people in God's church, but the people who will be sealed are the servants of God. And the question is, do we refer to ourselves as servants? And if we do, are we fulfilling the obligation of the servant? There's a time where Joshua saw an angel in front of him. This is Joshua chapter 5, verse 14, is our, our focus text. Verse 13, it says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went into him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What said thy, what said my Lord unto his servant? What said my Lord unto his servant? Again, in this text, Joshua is referring to himself as a servant. Upon hearing who it is that he is speaking to or that is standing in front of him, he says, this is a person in whom I am a servant of. And he bowed down. And we remember the story of, um, I'm forgetting this man who was a Mordecai. Mordecai. The king had said to, uh, to, the, to the people in his palace, when you see this man, I'm forgetting this man who was then later on beheaded by the king, when you see him, bow down to him. And Mordecai did not bow down to him. The three boys were told to bow down to the statue. So a posture of bowing down, of worshipping, simply says, Haman, thank you, 
simply means that you are the servant of the one you worship. A person in whom you worship means that you are the servant of that person. When Satan, when Satan tempted Christ and said, bow down to me, he was basically, he was basically trying to make Christ his servant. Because here we see that Joshua refers to himself as a servant and he bows and worships this person. So servants are people who worship their masters. So there's no way that we are going to be referred to as servants when we don't worship God. Now we see the connection of Revelation chapter 7 to Revelation chapter 14. When Christ is inviting us through the first angel's message to say, worship him who created the heavens and the earth. In other words, the first angel is inviting people to become the servant of God. The first angel is inviting people to listen to God. The first angel is inviting people to give their allegiance to God. And when Christ closes the telling of the prophecy in Matthew 24, he then speaks about faithful servants and those who are not faithful. Those who are not faithful, they were found to have that, to have lost patience to say the Lord is taking long to come. And they began to drink and to marry. While the faithful servants, they became faithful unto the end. I, it is my prayer that we may decide consciously to become the servants of God and to study what it means to be the servants of God. For the declaration will be made at the end. Come ye faithful servants, ye have done the biddings of thy father. We need to be living in the state of servanthood to say, Lord, whenever you call me, I will do it. And the Lord left us with a great commission. Go thee, therefore, teach people my ways, my laws, my statutes. And if anyone believes, baptize them in the name of my Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in closing, when Christ, in, in light of the Great Commission, when Christ met the woman at the well, and he asked her to give her something to drink, she says, how can you, being a Jew, ask out of me to drink? And Christ responds, I think it's verse 10 of chapter 4 in John. Christ says, if you knew who is it that said unto thee, give him to drink, you would have asked of him. In other words, Christ is saying, what you are doing, you are doing it out of ignorance. What you are doing, you are doing it out of, out of ignorance. But if you knew, you would have done things differently. In other words, Christ is giving her the benefit of the doubt to say, had you known what you don't know, you would have acted differently in this setup. Now, I believe with my heart that there are many people who would not be doing what they're doing had they known. And this is why then Paul asked the question, how can they do it when they, no one has told them? How can someone tell them if no one has went to them? This is why the Lord has left us with a great commission to go the therefore, and only servants will go. Church members will not go. The leaders of the church will not go. Only, those are just positions. Only people who are servants and they understand that as servants, we have a master and one day we shall give an account. And while servants are busy doing the biddings of their master, the master is busy sealing them in their foreheads. 
May the Lord really create in us a heart that will be willing to serve him, not worrying about what is happening around us, but only worrying about our servant, servant attitude towards our Father. In Jesus' name, may the Lord bless us with the spirit of servanthood. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you, Evangelist Valani. You know, as you were talking, you know, it's it's kind of God is literally getting down to the grassroots of our lives now. You know, we can be like a tree where we can have all the, the leaves, but if we're not bearing the fruits of the master, it amounts to nothing. And, you know, many people believe that they're in the church and all they want to receive is the blessings, the accolades. But but we need to know that we need worship, true worship. And true worship means servitude it means being humble it means being like God's people many of us don't seem to realize that for us to go to heaven we are actually replacing one third of the angels and the angels do his bidding so if we cannot do the bidding of God here on earth, why would we feel that he would actually invite us to do that same role in heaven? So thank you so much for just in awakening our minds, our sleeping minds, to the true condition of what God requires of his people. I don't know if anyone wants to respond to today's message. Mr. Mungabi, can I invite you to pray for the message and we'll go on to the next stage of our prayer session. Thank you. I just wanted to say when Jesus himself is, says, I come here to save. <laughs> I, I, I want to be, to save God. I, I want to be like that. Thank you. Let's pray. Our precious eternal Father in heaven. Jesus and the Holy Spirit, thank you so much for being in our midst, Matthew 18, 20. Thank you for using your man seven to remind us to save this master, to save this master. Lord, help us. Where are we for our master to save you? I just want to thank you, to praise you. May you bless him. May you enlarge his territory. May you continue to give him word, wisdom, knowledge, and power and understanding. As he is saving you, Jehovah, give him power to continue to save you. Give us power, all of us who are here, to continue to save you. As you are coming, Jesus, to take us home, we need to save you. In Jesus' name, I'm happy. I praise you. I thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Mungabi. Right, we're going to go into a season of prayer. I haven't been able to put up the, um, the reminder, but the first point we're going to do is the, um, the part of praise and thanksgiving. Who will do the praise and thanksgiving for us this afternoon? I've placed the scripture in the chat. Praise and thanksgiving is Psalms 31 verse 19. I can do the praise because I want to go to another group of that lady, Elizabeth, who is not well. Okay, thank you. 
Right. Thank you, Sister Mungabi. So it's Psalms 31, verse 19. Evangelist Villani, if you can do the prayer of confession and repentance, which is Luke 24, verse 47. Sister Rowena, can you do the prayer for us for the Holy Spirit? And I will do the prayer for prayer retreat and the scripture for the Holy Spirit. Oh, right. Yes. Um, yes. OK, um, Evangelist, I understand if you need to be excused. Um, if I can ask Sister Rowena to do the prayer for the Holy Spirit, which is Romans 8, verse 16, I will do the prayer for confession and repentance. And that will also include prayer retreat. Thank you. Can you begin, Sister Mungabi? Yes. Let me go to the verse. It's not there on the chart. I'm going to read uh, Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Let's pray. Our precious eternal Father, thank you, Lord. We can see your hand in action because of this timely message, O Lord. It strengthens me and strengthens everyone who is here so that we know we have a savior and we need to save him. We need to save him while we are still alive. Lord, I just want to thank you, to praise you for everyone who is in here. May you read our hearts, pour your Holy Spirit to put this message in us while we are still in all senses, while we are still deciding life and death before us. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you to praise you again for our families. Thank you for this group. Thank you for your men saving. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. My scripture for um, confession and repentance is Luke 24, verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sin shall be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Let us pray. Most gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, for this time that we can come into your presence. In your, the name of Jesus that we come in. Lord, we are wretched. We are weak. We are vile. We even give ourselves roles and statuses thinking, dear Lord, that we are above all things, but we are like a flower. We are weak. We are fragile. We cannot even add an extra day to our lives. So forgive us, dear Lord. Forgive us for our weakness. Forgive us for our pride. Forgive us, dear Lord, and have mercy upon us. Create within each one of us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we come into your presence and that as we receive the word for today, that we will experience a true understanding of our condition and a cleansing. We ask, dear Father, that you will blot out our sins. Give us a white robe, dear Lord of righteousness. And the word asks, how can a young man remain clean? by hiding the word of God in their hearts. So we ask you, Lord, that as we memorize the word, as we read and we spend time meditating, especially on the life of Christ, that we will be transformed, not by what we do, but by the renewing of our mind in your words. We thank you, Lord, that you have made arrangements for each one of us, that if we but love the Lord Jesus Christ, that his blood will blot out our sins, but with also of faith and belief. So Lord, help our unbelief, heal us from our backsliding, and restore the joy of our salvation. 
give us a word in due season to share with our friends, neighbours and family so that we are not just entering into the ark of Christ, but we are inviting others. So I pray to Father that you will lay a soul upon our hearts to minister to and to bring into a, the, the family of Christ. And I pray, O oh Lord, that our lives will be a living testimony of Christ being with us. So hear our prayers and we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to read uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 16. And it says, The Spirit, can, the Spirit Himself, uh, the Spirit Himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. Let us pray. Loving Father, thank you for the indwelling. Holy Spirit and his witness with our human spirit. We want to abide in you and you in us so that your Holy Spirit will have free access to teach us and to guide us into all truth. Dear God, we surrender our hearts before you today. Lord, you are the only one who sees all of us. You know our sins, you know our struggles, and you certainly know our weaknesses. Lord, we are imperfect. We are sinful and we need change. We need the Holy Spirit to renew our minds. We need the Holy Spirit to renew our hearts, to be transformed by your power. Father, cleanse us from our wickedness. Lord, you said love does not envy and boast in your word. So, Father, today, fill our hearts with love so we don't envy. Help us not to think highly of ourselves and help us not to feel superior to others. Help us not to be filled with comparison and competition, but Lord, create in us a clean heart so we can see you. Create in us a pure heart. Create in us a humble heart. Create in us a selfless heart. Create in us a gentle heart. And we ask you, dear Father, that you will fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit. Create in us a heart that reflects yours, a heart that serves others, a heart filled with forgiveness. Father God, you said, ask and you shall receive. If we ask you for a humble heart, surely you will answer and we shall receive. Though our flesh is weak and your grace shall strengthen us to be humble before you. Father, today we surrender our hearts to you. We ask the Holy Spirit to take good care of us. In you, Father, we have purity. In you, we have a heart transformed. In you, our hearts are filled with your word. And we thank you, Father, for the word. Thank you for being faithful to us. And we surrender our lives, Father, today. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Break us. Melt us. Mold us and fill us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. We ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. 
Let us continue in prayer. Most gracious Father, I thank you for the prayers that have gone before your throne. I come in agreement with the praise and the thanksgiving because you are worthy to be praised. I come in agreement with the confession and repentance of sin because with sin we cannot see the face of God. I come in agreement with the prayers for the Holy Spirit. We need a comforter in the times that we live in. We need a discerner of truth because so many lies pervade and we need the Spirit to seal us as worthy candidates, servants mm -hmm. of the Most High God. At this time, dear Lord, I pray for Prayer Retreat UK and other ministries that reach out to the lost, mm -hmm. the ones that go out, who go out and they share the words of God, giving life to those who are dying in sin, giving them an opportunity to know that there is a creator God who loves, who made a plan to rescue his children from the enemy. We know, dear Lord, that we live in a world of sin and there is a negative narrative about your character, but we thank you, Lord God, for such a time as this, you have raised up ministries, independent ministries, who are governed by the word of God, who are sounding the trumpet warning God's people to awake, rise, and to give God the glory. I thank you, dear Lord, for Prayer Retreat UK, for the work it is doing in wakening the saints, the sleeping laity, and showing them their true condition. I pray, dear Father, that you will use this ministry to direct your people to revelation that shows them that they need a God, that they need to be clothed in the righteousness of God. They need their eyes to see the lies and the deception of Satan. But most of all, you promised, dear Father, to fill us with the gospel of the kingdom that will be proclaimed to this generation and then the end will come. As the, the um, speaker today rightfully said, O oh God, the angels are holding back the winds of strife and we can see how the winds are just blowing and they are still being tethered by your angels that excel in power and strength. And Lord, it is only because your mercies why we have not been consumed nor deceived. So we pray for this ministry, for the morning prayer sessions where people get up and they intercede for the needs of the, their families and for the church. We pray for the study of the spirit of prophecy that has driven many of us to be faithful in our understanding of the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for the school that has been provided online for our children, dear Father, to be taught. And we thank you, Lord, for the prayer sessions at 12, where we can come together, though we may be across the world, we are brought near through the spirit of God. We pray for the evening messages, dear Father, and we pray a special prayer for Brother Pierce, who is doing this week of prayer, this week of prayer and study. And I know, dear Father, that he is touching nerves, and I know that we cannot place it on YouTube, but we know that where it's placed on Rumble, that is the truth, the living truth of God that will not be um will not be stopped nor will it be silent and it will raise your people dear father to stand in the gap to be an example in speech of conduct and we thank you lord for using your manservant this week we pray dear father for all those who are listening to the recordings and those who come to who come to the live presentations that they will be transformed by their renewing of mind we pray dear father also for the administers restoration those people who minister um, and organize the programs that you will just give them godly wisdom but you will also cover them in the blood of the lamb and shield them dear father 
from the antics of Satan. We pray, O oh Lord, for the meeting in December, the holy convocation. I pray, dear Father, that nothing will inhibit the meeting like it inhibited the meeting four years ago, but you will allow your people to meet one more time, dear Father. Extend mercy, open up the door of probation for a little longer so that your saints can be not only cloaked in your righteousness, but they can meet and encourage each other in the faith. We pray for the medical missionaries that are associated with the prayer retreat, that they will continue to minister to God's people and be filled with godly wisdom to meet the needs of people where pharmacia is causing them to be demise. I thank you, Lord, for such a time as this, that you are raising godly women, godly children, godly men to stand in a gap, dear Father, and to proclaim the message of truth without any hindrance. So I pray, dear Father, that you will continue to financially support, um, that you will also bless, allow your spirit to be invited into the people that are you doing the work here on prayer retreat. And I pray when all is said and done, that we will be encouraging God's people to be the servant of the Most High God, not being distracted by any other narrative other than to go he therefore to forth and preach the gospel of the kingdom to God's to this generation. So hear our prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.